Okay, so um, hopefully most of you will know of SAP. We're the world's largest business applications provider. Uh, over 300,000 cu customers, 25 different industries. So it may be a bit unknown to some of you as to why SAP is dealing in this world of the Internet of Things. Um, the first slide I have up here is our view of the connected world, how we look to connect, transform, and reimagine business. And the first of which is trying to understand the Internet of Content, which for many of us sort of been around for many, many years now. So we look at the likes of uh, Google searching, Yahoo searching that was available. Many of our documentation that we use today is now digitalized, gets done on PDFs, how we interact with content in terms of finding information. We no longer have to go to a physical library to pull out physical books. The information is there for us electronically. And then that leads us to the Internet of People, which for us is a very profound look at the world of the Internet of Things because the Internet of Things doesn't require a thing, it may just require an individual human being. And what I mean by that, for those of you that are familiar with um, Internet chats, the likes of social media as it relates to Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, that's how we communicate today as opposed to the old school pages that we used to have or the dial-up phones that we used to have many years ago. And then leading into, well, how do I control a workforce? How do I understand what my contractor contingent labor workforce looks like in the event that I need to put a new service repair technician out on an oil well because somebody's just falling ill? I can control all that based upon interaction of understanding where that individual is. Which then leads to the Internet of Things. And what is a thing? A thing can be absolutely anything and everything going through from a mobile device, right through to a kettle, right through to a dishwasher, right through to the steering wheel on your car. It can be absolutely anything that moves or doesn't move, if it has a pulse, if it has an IP address, we can ultimately track it. And what that means for us in the market as a whole, and I'm not going to read out all the numbers there, they're kind of self-apparent, but if you look at manufacturing, such as connected manufacturing and things like predictive maintenance, identifying when a machine or a part is about to fail before it has actually failed. We have a number of customers that are well entrenched into this industry. And some of the analyst stats you'll see up there, such as 500 billion US dollars in savings, just in the manufacturing industry alone. So there's a huge opportunity there from a business standpoint on how to leverage the Internet of Things, how to track an individual device or an individual machine to check the health and state of that machine or device, and therefore determine what its healthness may be across a manufacturing production floor. So when we look at an industry, we have to understand the industries are very important quite clearly. As I said, SAP uh, dominates many of the industries, particularly in manufacturing for business applications, particularly in oil and gas and utilities. So this chart shouldn't be that new to some of you, but I'll just explain one or two stats on there. 14.4 trillion US dollars in increased revenues between 2013 and 2022. Those are the predictions that we're, we are seeing right now today since we've been tracking it since 2013 and what we hear from the analysts. Now, if any one of us was to get just 1% of that, I'm sure we'd be relatively happy. I know if I had that as part of my bonus, I'd be extremely happy. But the whole idea is that it's a huge market opportunity. And then we look at the projects that are going on that we work with a number of our system integrator partners uh, Accenture, Deloitte, Capgemini, and so on, you'll see that many of the projects that are going on today is as much as 80% are planning their next level of investments in Internet of Things use cases and projects. And then on top of that, the 65% of these projects are being defined by IT. So again, we come from the business world at SAP, but over the past 10, 12 years, we've transitioned to being a software provider that understands technology, and one would argue that we're one of the first pioneers to come up into the market with in-memory technology that allows you to process transactional 
and analytical workloads on the same data set. I don't need to create separate data marts. And with that type of footprint as the backdrop, I now have to start looking at the Internet of Things and determine how am I going to connect to data? How am I going to connect to a device? What is the connectivity protocols? And we work with a range of partners in this space. So our philosophy is that it's not going to be one single vendor that can own an end-to-end -end solution for IoT. Hands down, I don't think that is at all possible. So our perspective is that we will partner where it makes sense to partner and we'll leverage our own platform to enable us to extend to build out an end-to-end -end solution. So once we understand how we can connect, how we can get the data and take that raw data and try and make sense of it, we have the ability to start looking at how we can transform, how we can transition that business or that industry. And again, when I'm talking about data here, I'm talking about machine data, social data, weather data, people data, CRM, ERP data. I don't care where the data is coming from. I need to harmonize that data and determine how I can transform business. Once I have that data set available to me, and I can run predictive and statistical mathematical libraries against that data to derive new business insight, I can now determine how I'm going to reimagine my business, start offering new services, new products that were before unable to be done because I didn't have the bandwidth or the relevant data points, artifacts available to me to do that. And I'll talk about a couple of use cases momentarily where we've actually done that with several of our customers. So this is our theme, connect, transform, and reimagine. Think the art of the possible and deliver that to the end user. And when I talk about an end user, before I get into this next slide, an end user could be the likes of you and I, the, the end consumer. So we have a retail customer that deployed SAP technology with some of our partners that my wife uses, which I hate, by the way, because it allows her to look online on any type of a retail store, e-commerce store, put their items in the basket. And we've all seen this and we've all done it. And then she walks away from not making the purchase. At that point, I'm the most happiest person in the world because I've now saved roughly 700 pounds. But here's the irony, the next morning she gets an email saying you've still left your items in the basket, would you like to purchase? Worse than that, we're out in the shopping mall or the supermarket the following day and she's walking past one of the branches of the store that she's looked online. And she immediately gets pinged on her mobile device to say those items that you had in your basket, we actually have them in the store that's only 20 yards away from you and I'm happy to offer you a 10% discount. Well, guess what happens next? She'll go in and she'll purchase and she'll see other items that she likes and then the, the actual total dollar value or euro or sterling value of her purchase increases. That is how these firms from a retail standpoint are getting more provocative and prescriptive just by doing geolocation analytics and doing web analytics in terms of how she actually interacts on that website. So you look at the diagram here, I spoke about connect, transform and reimagine. In the bottom left area, you're looking at the devices that are available. As I said, a device can be anything, anywhere, at any time. All I need is a connectivity adapter, whether that's in real time, or whether it's in batch mode, whether it's in ASCII format, whether it's in binary format, I don't care, I can load that data in. Once I have the ability to load that data, I can then start to manage that data in a meaningful manner. And again, SAP has technology for each one of these components. So we have technology that we call Ultralight that allows me to have an embedded database, a small footprint that's embedded into a handheld device, supported by Android, Mac OS, Windows Mobile, and BlackBerry, for the BlackBerry users that are still out there. Not only with that, I can actually capture data on the edge. So everything in the bottom left-hand corner is what we consider the edge. 
beyond your firewall, it may be at a customer site, it actually may be in my hand as I'm talking to you right now, I can capture that information and process it locally. I don't have to have this tsunami effect of loading every piece of data or fire hose of every piece of data into my main data center, which you see in the center here, would be in the SAP HANA cloud platform. I can if I choose to, because again, many in the telco world will want to capture every single piece of data to understand your network bandwidth, to understand your capacity planning, to understand your call data records as to how your end consumer is utilizing your services. But this is the key difference that SAP is doing and what we see the majority of our customers asking for. Now, just to put it into context, 73 to 74% of the world's GDP touches an SAP system every single day. So when we check the finger of the pulse of our customers, we're really checking what the industry and what the market as a whole is looking for. And unequivocally, what they've asked us to do is take the machine data, the machine insights, and contextualize that data with business data. So if I'm getting a temporary read reading or a vibration reading of some machine, I actually want to know when I purchased that machine. When are the parts due for its next service? When was its last service? What's its tolerance for failure? Much of that data is going to be held in an ERP system. More importantly, who was the last person that serviced it? I, who was the actual supplier of the service level agreement that I have? Again, that's in my CRM and my ERP systems. So what you see in the bottom left under the cloud diagram there is feeding information from the edge to the core. And we look at the core as being your books and records, your ERP systems, what drives your business. Because once I understand that data, I can start to have an impact on workflow, people, and process. So I can transform my business. And once I can transform it, you'll see on the right-hand side, I can start to reimagine the level of services I can offer to my customers and the end consumer. So take the example I gave with my wife in the retail store. That's getting very prescriptive to an individual. Well, not only can I do that with retail, I can also do it with healthcare. So many of us understand Fitbits, which are getting onto the next level now of actually monitoring a person's heart rate and blood pressure when they're running. Well, what if I can actually monitor their medical condition if they have some kind of long-term illness that they need to be taking their medication on a regular basis? I can track that in real time to determine whether they're actually taking them on a regular basis, and if not, send them an alert to remind them. Again, we are working on these solutions with many medical institutions globally. This is what we mean by the world of the Internet of Things and how it impacts business, how it changes people's lives. So again, just touching on what SAP has to offer, clearly we have applications. I mentioned before, we're the world's leading business applications service provider, have been for the better part of 43 years. We have platforms, most notably a product called SAP HANA, uh, which I referred to yes, uh, just a while ago, which is our in-memory uh, technology, allows us to process transactional and analytical workloads. It also allows me to do geospatial, text processing, graph processing, predictive analytics, all from the same data set. And that's just to name just several of the solutions it does. But I also mentioned that at the end of the day, we have to collaborate with partners in order for us to extend that base platform. And what it looks like in terms of a high-level architecture, as it was, I'm not going to get into the details technically here of how all this works, but look at the edge on the left-hand side, which, as I said earlier, could actually be on an individual device. I spoke about a couple of products there. SQL Anywhere is a product that we acquired via our acquisitions of Sybase some five years ago. So we have rich database capabilities, either on-premise, on the edge, or in the cloud. We have rich streaming technology, 
with complex event processing, that I can process hundreds of thousands of events per second with sub-millisecond latency. Again, that is used in many of the large telco institutions globally today. It's used in many of the world's financial services institutions for real-time algorithmic trading. We've now brought that into our portfolio to look at the things on the edge and process as much as we can for aggregation, filtering, complex calculations before I have to move the raw data anywhere. Very powerful. And not only that, we're working with hardware partners to embed this technology on the hardware, even down to as low as the chip level. I spoke earlier about the HANA cloud platform. It's the SAP platform based in the cloud, based upon SAP HANA. It's open to be available as a solution that you can have as a private cloud or a public cloud. And again, there's over 30,000 customers out of our 300,000 customers that have already made the shift from an on-premise solution to a cloud solution hosted by SAP. And then to the right, you'll see where I'll talk about Business Suite, or Suite for HANA, as we call it. This is the ERP CRM systems. So picking up data from the edge, processing that data, providing contextualization, providing some meaning to that data, to then go and impact business outcome and drive new business value. Again, all being done in real time. So I spoke a lot about the market. I've spoke a little bit about SAP. What we are seeing as well is that customers are saying, well, how do we make it easy? How can you help us to run simple and demystify all of this complexity from this world of IoT? So true to our form, we've created a range of applications, off-the-shelf applications that can be fine-tuned and tweaked to a specific organization. So we have connected assets, connected logistics, connected manufacturing, augmented reality. For those of you that were familiar with the, uh, the Google Glass, I know they've took it off the market, but it's going to be coming back. There are other vendors out there that provide similar capabilities that you can provide a service technician with video glasses that when he walks into a shop floor to repair a specific unit, he actually has video streaming directly on the glass that directs him to where that particular faulty machine is. So he's not losing time on trying to figure out where he has to go and repair a specific unit. Again, making it more efficient. That's what we mean by augmented reality. We have warehouse picker, that when you walk into an e-commerce store and you've actually purchased goods online, the warehouse that fulfills that order, the service technicians actually have these glasses available that they can pick out the goods in a much more quicker and efficient manner. So a couple of examples for you motorcycle or motorbike enthusiasts that are out there. Harley Davidson is one of our biggest customers. The stats are up there for themselves. But essentially, they took a, a time turnaround from you order the part to I order the bike to make an amendment to the customized bike. All of their bikes were actually hand built. It was taken as much as a 21 day cycle. With our technology for connected manufacturing, we took that down to six hours. So if I wanted to change the saddle, I wanted to change the suspension springs, I could walk in the day of it was due for delivery and make that change. Huge customer service change and uptake. Connected logistics. Hamburg Port Authority. We did this in conjunction with one of our partners, Deutsche Telekom, with T-Systems. That I can control the inbound and outbound traffic of containers on ships and containers coming in from the trucks and lorries. Due to German efficiency, our lorry drivers would come in bang on time, but the ships may actually come in a little bit late. For this particular port, they're expecting a 22 to 25% increase in the next 12 months in terms of the number of containers coming in and out of the port. The challenge is, is that the land that the port sits on is not going to increase. So I have to find a more optimal way to control the inbound and outbound traffic. And we do that with SAP Cloud Platform, with telecommunications provided by T-Systems, one of our core partners. But it's not just limited to ports. 
It could be airports, it could be any service logistics company that has high fleet management that it needs to take care of. So this is my last slide, I believe. Um, the essence here is that we have to look at ecosystems. It's a common theme here that I repeat time and time again to my sales force. I have to work with partners. Each of the industries and customers that we come into are going to have a specialization of their own. They want to have some uniqueness. They want to have a competitive advantage. And there's going to be various number of different partner solutions, both from an OEM standpoint in terms of what we can embed and what they can embed from our technology that's going to enhance that end-to-end -end solution. So our ethos is that ecosystems are extremely important for us to deliver an end-to-end -end solution. And that ultimately helps us to innovate and it helps our customers to innovate. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. I know you're going to have a very fruitful two days here. And for those of you that require information, uh, we do have a stand that's just next door, stand number one, I believe it is. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.